This week's Iron MPI brought to you by Digikey and Ifrit is in play, Lady Ada. What is the Iron MPI this week? I'm glad you asked. This week's Iron MPI, like I said, is from in play. We've not featured them before. I'm really excited. I always like to have a new company. I feel like we do a lot of, uh, you know, the ST, NXP, microchip, um, Sincerion, in play. Uh, they, oh, make, awesome. they make Bluetooth uh, chips. Um, and their latest product is the N100. The N100. Uh, Nano Beacon is a Bluetooth chip, and it's kind of a totally different take on Bluetooth development. Uh, you know, we've covered and we stock a lot of Bluetooth chips uh, here at Adafruit uh, NRF series. There's also the TI series. Um, Dialog also has Bluetooth chipsets. Um, what's interesting about this Nano Beacon is it's it's a device that's only meant to do advertisement, so it doesn't connect to um, as a client or peripheral to uh, you know your smartphone or your computer all it does is bleep out information like a little beacon it sort of sends like like data out um so it's a lot cheaper because it only has to transmit it's also a lot less power because it doesn't do any receiving it only does transmission but what's really neat about it is it has uh, no firmware no uh, onboard flash that's reprogrammed instead it has like these capabilities that you can program uh, using the built-in eprom that's one time programmable um and they've got, uh, you know, it's Bluetooth 5, it's 2.4 gigahertz. Um, there's no coding, no programming. Um, it's a powerful chip. It's got like, I think, plus 8 or plus 4 dB. Um, it can run on, you know, coin cell batteries up to uh, from 1.5 to 3 volts. Um, it does have SRAM and it does have this, again, this OTP memory. You can get it in two packages. Uh, it seems like it's exclusively only available at DigiKey, which is great because we're doing INP for DigiKey. You can get it as a DFN or a QFN. The DFN, same core, same memory, just has fewer pins and it's like a teeny bit less expensive. Um, so inside, uh, there's that the finite state machine um, that kind of runs the thing. There is, you know, a firmware that does Bluetooth. It's just not accessible really to the user. Um, instead, there's peripherals. There's the sensor ADC, uh, UART, one wire, and I squared C input. Um, there's also GPIO, of course. There's the eFuse that controls like what it does. And then there's some memory and, you know, there's timers and stuff. And then output, it just sends Bluetooth based on um, what the OTP memory has been programmed to do, like what ADCs or I squared C commands, it should be running every n milliseconds, and then what data to send out. Um, there's a lot of specs. I'm not going to go into them, but basically, it's you know peripherals connected to a, a Bluetooth output. Um, the you know there's two versions. There's a sorry, the QFN version has two crystal options, 26 megahertz, which you absolutely need for the Bluetooth uh, signal, but for low power like intermediate um, data logging, there's also a 32 kilohertz RTC crystal. Um, the ADC is one of the peripherals. There's four channels. It also has the ability to read uh, half of the VBAT, which is handy. So you can, uh, against a reference, you can tell what the VCC voltage is. Um, and there's also a built-in temperature sensor. I squared C is kind of neat. Uh, we'll show later. You can actually have it be a, a I squared C controller. It can connect to a peripheral. So there's an example of connecting it to an SHT40 temperature humidity sensor. So if you're doing a project where it's just like read data from an I2C sensor and then bleep it out over Bluetooth to like a sensor collection uh, a central device, um, this will work great. And again, you don't have to learn any SDK. There's also plus uh, PWM detection and pulse train. Again, because there's no reception, there's no output. You can't use this to turn on or off an LED. It can only read data I squared C whatever digital io in um and then send it out to bluetooth um there's also it seems like there's a couple like trigger options like if certain you know the data is above or below something or the battery is low send a report um if um uh, there is a gpio toggle send a report so there's a couple simple simple triggers that you can do actions based on um, the inputs um the uh well i wanted to note that there's on chip matching so it's really nice as you literally just like stick an antenna on the end uh very low cost maybe you know you use one uh capacitor um 
as a blocking cap, but otherwise it's, um, you know, very simple, low cost bill of materials. Here is the reference schematic for the QFN 18, which has a bunch of pins. You can see there's the crystal. Um, there is uh, the, sorry, there's the uh, 26 megahertz crystal on the top left. You know, um, if you want to use a, a more precision um, 32 kilohertz uh, RTC crystal, there you can attach that, you know, your build material goes up, but um, it's more precise. You just a connector antenna, there's a couple of passives, but really like nothing else. If you see this, it's like you can pretty much connect it directly to the battery, right? It, it has this built-in LDO. You don't even need a uh, power regulator separately. Um, the DFN8 is even, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the DFN8 is even simpler because um, you don't have the RTC crystal, just as like what, two GPIO and you can, you know, use it to program it and then use it for um, I squared C and analog. Um, and here's the good news, uh, because it's so simple, right? You're wondering like, wow, like it has no flash. It has no outputs. Um, it can't receive data. What's like, what's the goal here? It's like, well, it's really, really, really cheap. Um, yeah, like 40 cents cheap, which is ridiculously cheap for a configurable Bluetooth uh, transmission device um, that's really well designed. It has all these peripherals built in, especially like an ADC and I squared C controller which would make it really great for something like um, these like sensor beacons, right? These sensor tiles, little things that they just send a beep with a random number or their identifier or the temperature um, every n seconds. And, you know, they might get uh, destroyed. They might be disposable. Um, they just need to be very low cost. Your whole bill of materials can easily be a dollar. Um, I would recommend getting the dev kit, uh, which is what I got. So the dev board comes with a little programmer. Uh, good news, the programmer is just a CH340. It's just a your FTDI type of programming thing. So you can really use any. Uh, if you have one handy, you could use um, that for bootloading. Um, the board above, you know, you just need a uh, 2.4 gigahertz antenna. For your final design, of course, use a trace antenna or chip antenna. But uh, just for development, they have an SMA connector. There's a CR 12 millimeter coin cell battery on the back. Uh, there's a reset button, and then you can kind of use this just for development. There's a little jumper for current measurement um, and for the enable pin. So it's like a nice little dev board, and you get three of them because, again, it's one-time programmable. Uh, once you've decided what it's going to do, you burn it into flash, and you can't change it. The firmware uh, can be configured, sorry, the firmware, the EEPROM can be configured with the NanoBeacon tool. It's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac, which is nice. It's written in PyQt. Uh, you can even see the source code in the download because they just kind of give you the entire package. Um, this is the tool. It's pretty simple. You just select the UART, you connect. Uh, so I just did this in like 30 seconds. And then um, I followed the tutorials to set the advertising data to send the VCC, which is like based with the battery voltage and the temperature. And then um, while you're doing your development, you obviously want to like experiment and try different things. So you run it out of RAM. So you click run and RAM, it'll upload the code and it doesn't burn it into the EEPROM. You run it in RAM until you get your thing working. Because it's going to take a lot of iteration, especially if you're working with like I2C. Clever idea. That's cl yeah, it's very clever. And then once you're done, then you burn it into EEPROM and then it's like permanent. The nice thing about EEPROM is it's not going to get like erased by accident. But, you know, again, you can't uh, fix it after the fact. Um, and then I just used the NRF Connect on Android phone, connected, and you can see uh, the raw data um, has, uh, I mean, it's not decoded here, but the raw data was changing as the temperature was changing. You can also uh, set what you want, just like random numbers or different analog voltages or digital voltages. So you can look through the app and see like all the different things that you can um, uh, change with it. You can also change, I don't think you can change the manufacturing name, um, but you can change the payload that's advertised and it's like 20 bytes or so. Um, and then another cool thing I noticed is there's a lot of great tutorials uh, that um, Mohammed Afane wrote. And I believe they also have a Bluetooth newsletter that I subscribe to, which is really good. So um, this is like novel bits. Uh, and so they wrote a bunch of great tutorials on using this. There's also um, an excellent, um, collection of YouTube videos, uh, including, you know, one that features the Adafruit SHT40, uh, but like all the things like, you know, how to use it with a single wire, use it with GPIO, capacitive touch, 
um, et cetera, all the different inputs that you might want to connect to use to um, uh, control this little beacon device. What the what? I'm not used to seeing five digit in stock numbers. Yes. 54,000 of them? Well, they're 40 cents a piece. <laughs> So I'm, just, I'm just not used to seeing any stock number of greater You than can zero. buy them off like 20K. Um, you can drive them around. So, yeah, they have the, this is the QFN version. Which also, the DFN version also has like about 50K in stock. Um, and this is a cool tip. I, you were talking about this today, and you're like, oh, like this, this is really interesting to me. It's quite interesting yeah. because at first I was like, oh my God, it's EEPROM. But it, because you can run out of RAM, I was like, oh, okay, it's not so bad. Like, I thought. I thought like, wow, you really just had to I guess. I like little rims, like scratch, for, like get ready. Get ready, yeah. try it out. So I think this is neat. Um, you know, if you don't want to learn SDK, you don't want to muck around with Zephyr or Matter or whatever, you just want to send like, you know, if you just have a temperature humidity sensor and you're sending that data, you don't need a display, you don't need LEDs. This is it, it just runs on a coin cell. Yeah, it can show off the, the dev kit. Um, so yeah. This is just the dev board. It's very simple, but um, you know, I think it's a very interesting idea, especially since you've seen, you know, air tags, which basically, I mean, other than the beeping part of the air tag, um, this is just, you know, it just sends out the signal. Uh, normally these sort of tiles are a couple bucks a piece, but a chip like this would reduce the cost significantly. And because it's only transmitting, and it's minimal, there's no core that's really running. It's just this like finite state machine, basically. Um, the power is very, very low. And that's on MPI. MPI.